in the wolf den, the knife laboratory here, and I'm starting Charles's knives that he dropped off the other day. It is now Monday. It's cooler. It's not 83 degrees, not sunny. And I'm sitting in here and I'm going to start doing these three knives. Two fixed blades. This is a Boker Auto Kalashnikov. And I wanted to just kind of show you a little bit of how I get started doing this. When you want me to put a wicked edge on your knives. So what I did here is I'm taping up kind of like as if you're painting a car. I'm taping up this boker from Charles to not get any uh, dust or anything like that down in the pivot. This is a boker auto EDC type knife and you can see how I kind of tape it up. I leave just the edge and right here I didn't see this earlier when he dropped it off but that has reminiscence of looking like it's a rounded off Tonto or something. And right there where my fingernail is, is a giant chip in the blade. So that giant chip in the blade is going to have to be dealt with one way or another. And one of the cardinal rules when you're doing something with someone else's knives is take as least amount of steel off of it as you possibly can. I believe I'll be able to get that out, but it's going to take some time and I'm going to have to go down to the really coarse diamond stones. I do not know if you can see that. There is a nice chip in that blade. So that's how I get started with your knife. I have to tape it up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stick it in the vise of the Wicked Edge. Let me use my guide here, my depth gauge. You've got two sets of holes, one on the top, one on the bottom, for different depths. And then you put the blade in and you rest it on there. And in the beginning, you're kind of guesstimating where this knife needs to be in here lock down the vise it has nothing it has barely an edge it looks like it's been ripped on a carbide sharpener which is really not good so the next thing now is to basically color it in with a sharpie and mark the edge Make it nice so as you're working on it, you can see where you're hitting. I can get out, say, a thousand grit stone and use this to take the marker off and kind of see where the edge is. I'm going to do some guesstimation where this bevel is at. I don't think it's that much or anything. But I'm just going to try 20 degrees. You got 20 degrees marked down right here. You can check it with your angle cube. I turn it on. I lay it on the base, on this base here. I zero it out. It's got magnets. Here, 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 here. So what I can do then is I can attach it to here. So I'm going to lay this down and see right now I've got that angle. It's at 19.3 degrees. But let's see where the marker comes off. I may just have to, many times, you get a really bad blade like this, 
the best thing for you, it seems to do, if you, with a big old chip in it here. Now, I'm taking the marker off, but it's a little high on the blade. So I'm gonna go in a little bit, let's say 19 degrees, okay? On my scale, it's 19. But as high as the knife it goes, changes all that. So I'm gonna check it right now. And that's basically 18 and a half degrees. And let's see what happens now. Am I getting rid of the marker? Am I getting rid of the marker on the entire existing bevel? Kind of. So let's switch over here onto this side. And let's go to 15, 16, 17, 18. Let's go to 19 degrees. See, this is how it all works. That's why this Wicked Edge is such precision. Because you not only have degree angles down here on the bar that slides the slides the stones but then you've got a micro adjustment I mean I don't see any of these other ones with micro adjustments and so that's a 20 almost 21 degrees so I want to move it back to 19. Okay, there's 19. Yeah, that's about 19 right there. And then we go over here. And what we're trying to do is match the bevel angle. For any other Wicked Edge sharpening guys that are just getting into it, I'm going to pass on what I learned from somebody else that I watched on YouTube. And if you're doing in the sharp, if you're wanting to do the sharpening business, he said, you know, when you get your kits and everything, about the lowest grit that you're gonna get is like a 100, 200 st diamond stone. This guy said, I can't remember who exactly it was. It was a long time YouTube, you know, knife guy. He said, buy that 50 and 80, grit stones he says because people are going to give you knives that look like they were you know used to chop cinder blocks in half and if you don't think you're going to have to be taking off some steel and getting it back to a sharpenable state he said just go get these don't ask don't ask too many questions you'll learn why and he said it kind of sarcastically, and guess what? That dude was right. I'm starting at 80 right now, and I'm trying to work this chip out of here, and I literally have to get out the magnifying glass. Yeah, the magnifying glass here, and the flashlight, and keep looking to see if I can get rid of this giant chip. I might have to go to the 50. 50 is on this side. I'm beyond just right now trying to create a burr. Okay. I mean, I got to get... I got to get that chip out of there. Whoo, noisy, huh? I mean, I don't think I'm going to have to work on this a little bit, so I got to really concentrate. I even got a magnifying glass this big. Let's see if that chip. That chip is still not completely gone. Got to work on it some more. When I when I go, whoosh, I don't want the, I don't want no blade that I'm working on skipping because that's what it's going to do. I think we finally got that chip out of there. Yeah. Whew, 
That took a little while. And believe it or not, this thing wasn't even close to sharp. And it's sharper now than it was. And after I'm running the 50 and 80 grit diamond stones on it. So, it looks like we're going to go through pretty much the whole gamut here. Got a nice burr. Tighten everything up. Because it has a way of loosening up. I'm going to recheck my angle. Double check. After running them 50 and 100. And now that we got a burr and got the chip out, I'm going to run... 100 grit and then we're going to step through all the stones up to probably maybe 800 or a thousand and then top it off with the fine and uh, coarse ceramic that makes a nice presentation keeps it a nice good you know, toothy working edge. I just scrub up and down at first here before we do any polishing. You can feel it. You can feel the burr getting smoother. All right, I'm just up to 100 grit right now. And if I ran my finger across this, I'd slice my finger open. This is already so sharp. It's AUS 8. Great steel. I mean, that thing right there is going to slice my finger open, and I haven't even left 100 grit yet. I'm doing pop, basically a smoothing out now. I try to really concentrate on not missing down here at the very base of the blade. Now, when I do this, I can just feel it. It's so much smoother than when I started out. Whew! That's some old gun right there with skin of deer. All right, I'm going to continue on. And we'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm on my last step that I usually do for somebody's pocket knife like this. Their EDC. I want their EDC to look good. But then again, I mean, they, you know, they don't really need some super polished edge. But I'm going to give it a little polish because it just makes it pop. So I got my 1200 and 1600 ceramic stones here. They really need to be cleaned. Let's see if I can just clean them up just a hair here. This is this is alcohol and just water. See all that steel? I just want you to know, because I don't know if I've done it or not, how the old wicked edge kind of works here. I've done videos on the work sharp. Now we're going into the depths of wicked edge. Such a fine, fine sharpener. Okay, I just went up to a thousand, so now I'm on twelve hundred ceramic. I'm just going to polish this blade up for Charles, so when he pulls this out of his pocket as an EDC, he looks down at that shiny, nice edge before he cuts something and says. Damn, I'm proud of this knife. Now we kind of do a countdown here. I had to work that 50 and 80 grit mighty hard to get rid of that damn chip. And, and I had to kind of adjust my angle. Because the angle I had it set at just wasn't reaching the chip. So this was basically a reprofile. If you want your blade you want to be able to read newspaper in your blade, I can take you there. Because I got some brand new right in the bottom of that bottle. What is this? I got a little bit in this bottle. Two micron 
diamond spray. See how it's mixing up? And I put this on the uh, leather straps and I combine it with the 3M lapping films that has just, oh, just the slightest little bit of grit to it and it just polishes it up like a mirror. This is about done right now. Boy, is that edge looking good. See, I don't want to take off any more steel. I'm trying to polish out some of the scratch marks. All right, the Auto Matte Kalashnikov 74 Boker Plus. And that chip that was right there where my fingertip, I can see in the bright light, it is completely gone now. Yeah, you bring your knife to me. The son of a bitch is wicked sharp by Wicked Edge and quality knife sharpening, Jacksonville, Florida. Oh yeah. Well, that's another one for the books and another one for Charles and he's got a nice EDC. Auto. Boker Plus. Come on.